Welcome back to Gear Review. Today we're going to be looking at the Banshee and also comparing that to the Nature Hike Taga or Tagger 2. Both these tents are very reasonably priced. The Tagger 2 I recently got for about £90 and the Banshee Pro 200 I've had now for a year or so and it probably cost me about £120 or something like that at the time. Both very reasonably priced tents. Jumping straight in, we're going to be looking at the Banshee Pro 200. This is a really solid, durable tent. You can see here, it is well put together, taped seams, reinforced points, and it is a good, solid construction. The only issue I have about the Banshee 200 Pro is potentially the ground that we're looking at there. I just wonder how it would hold up in rocky ground or if it was accidentally pitched on uh, a stone for example. The fly sheet, Van Gogh call it the Protex RS, is a whip stop, uh, ripstop weave, really durable and again all the seams are factory taped. It's 700D, uh, or sorry 70D and fire retardant as well and again it's it's a good solid construction you might have noticed there that there was a little bit of condensation i had slept out in it testing out the van gogh cobra 600 sleeping bag and there's another review for it i'll link it down below and there's a wee bit of condensation the next morning it was quite a humid night but nothing that would give you any cause for concern at all there's plenty of our events on the van gogh pro 200 uh, so the air circulates very well uh, there's no issue with the condensation really at all and you'll see there's just a wee bit of a, a rigid seam there that helps it stay opened and just helps that air circulate so yeah this is this is a good trekking tent it's, it's it is the tent that i would normally use when trekking but i was interested in getting something a bit lighter and that's where the nature hike tagger or tagger 2 comes in and we'll see a bit more of that later on the tent pegs that come with the Van Gogh Banshee are, they're, they're grand, I mean they're, they're, they're lightweight, they do the job. They are something that I have replaced um, just for if you're on maybe rockier ground or if the weather conditions are pretty bad. The guidelines again are good, they use the line lock as you can see there. Good, practical line locks. Um, no issue, guidelines are absolutely fine on the Banshee. The thing, one of the things about the Banshee is it's a very, very stable tent. Oh, you can see I've pitched that ever so slightly incorrectly, but no worries. Uh, the Banshee is a very stable tent. When it, the guidelines, the pegging out, um, and also the, I forgot the name of it there for a second, the tension band system. Uh, makes this a really really effective tent for windy conditions um, and the quality overall I mean it's, it's a really good tent if you are in poor weather conditions but absolutely this would be the tent I'd be taking with me if I was going somewhere and I knew it was going to be uh, windy or if I knew where we're going to be up against some uh, significant amounts of rain it's a fantastic uh, all-weather tent but let's move on and look at the Tiger 2 this, as you will have noticed, is a smaller um, pack size and it is lighter than the Banshee Pro 200 and that's a big attraction for me. Uh, very lightweight aluminium tent pegs you can see there. I mean, they are, they are feather light, they are really, really light. Nice and bright in colour so hopefully you won't lose them when you're out using it. One thing I would say about them is they're a bit trickier to put into the ground. The, if you're trying to force them in with your hand, at that point you will feel it. Um, so it is useful to have um, a mallet or something like that with you when you're putting those in. Very similar line lock type guidelines. Again, reflective, you'll see them. And the aluminium tent poles. So with the Nature Hike Tiger 2, there are two poles really one main pole and then a smaller pole that goes across the top. I'll show that later. 
and again it comes with just a little strap to help hold that all together and squish it down a wee bit for packing. So now on to the tent itself. The material, the, the big difference between this and the, the Banshee is the material used in the tent. You straight away notice how light this stuff is. It is incredibly, incredibly light and obviously with that comes concern about durability. With the this tent you, you get a ground sheet, a, a footprint with it that is significantly thicker than the, the tent material and I was really glad to see that. I mean I was, I was curious about getting a ground sheet for the Banshee just to protect it but the, the Tiger 2 definitely would need the ground sheet with it. So moving on to the inside, once you get this up one of the big advantages of this tent is the room. The, the, this is a smaller pack size than the Banshee, but it erects into a significantly more roomy tent. One of the big differences is the way the tent is pitched. Uh, it, the, the Banshee can kind of come at you at angles, whereas this is much more of a kind of semicircle type pitch which makes it feel a lot more roomier both at the, the foot and head end if you're lying down but also the height I mean there's there's plenty of height to sit up tall there whereas in the Banshee that's that's simply not there if I, I sit up on the Banshee and my head's basically touching it I'm not that tall I'm about 5'8 whereas when you're sitting in this there's plenty of headroom which which makes it a very comfortable tent there's also the vestibules out each side. I mean, there's vestibules out each side of the Banshee as well. Um, similar size-wise. Plenty of space there for your shoes, for storage, putting your gear. The vestibule at one side, and then obviously you have the door at the other side. The Banshee has a door on each side, which can be useful, but as I say, Although the Banshee 200 is meant to be a two-man tent, really, you're only going to be comfortable with one person in it. Some pockets on the inside there. Um, and you'll see the air vents down the bottom there too. So, nice big door. And some tie backs. Just if you want to tie that mesh back. The zips are decent. I mean, again, the quality seems grand. Uh, I'll need to have this up and go on a few times before I can really give any proper feedback on it. But first impressions are the quality is good. Another vestibule at that side well that's the, the doorway at that side but again useful storage uh, you can see how you would be able to open that door peg it back and maybe do a bit of cooking in there if you needed to now as i said before the material on this is a lot lighter than the banshee and where you see it or where you feel it the most is the the floor um very lightweight very thin you definitely would want to have the ground sheet under. Uh, tape seams, in, well, tape seams throughout the tent. Again, quality seems okay. Um, it's not bad at all. We'll have to wait and see how this holds up in some rougher weather than there was at my back that day. But no, the quality seems okay. You can see where the, the seam tip is a bit overlapped there. You can just see that lighter color. Um, we'll see how that, that holds up. Easy enough to put a wee bit more seam tape over it if needs be, but no, I'm, I'm not expecting that to give any, any problems. So just looking at the pegs and the guidelines, the, the pegs themselves have a wee notch just at the top for the guidelines to clip into. And again, your standard kind of material there. Guidelines. Tabs are sewn into the tent. Again, the stitching looks okay. And certainly durable, fine, in the initial kind of testing here. Again, stitching's grand. And 
and zips are fine, no, no obvious snagging. I think they will be, they will do very well. I mean, one of the big things to consider for this tent is this, this tent is about, this cost me about 90 pounds um, delivered. This is a not, this is not an expensive tent. But for that money, you're getting a very lightweight, ultra light tent. Very roomy. I mean, really, really impressed with the room in it. The material and features are standard. There's nothing there that's really going to, there's nothing there that's really going to completely excite you. But at the same time, it's, it has everything you would want it to have. And it, at a much, much reduced weight than the Banshee. So again, plenty of air vents there. The one wee thing that would maybe worry me just about the air vent is that the, there's like a tab to keep it opened. And it's in the Banshee, it's, it's, it's like a, a plastic. Um, it, it won't do any harm to the tent. In the Tiger 2 here, it seems to be like a small piece of metal. And I just would be a wee bit curious to see how that will affect it. Um, you just might need to be careful how you're putting it away and thinking about that bit of metal not to be stuffing it down too tight. So there's that top pole I talked about. So the Banshee construction, or the Tiger 2 construction, it's one pole goes north to south. And then this kind of little mini pole east to west and just clips in there and that kind of holds up the the roof of the tent making giving it that good kind of roomy feel in there plenty of points for guidelines i haven't put the guidelines on just for this um it was a very very quick look at it in the back garden there but uh plenty of places to secure the guidelines just to give you that stability um it does sit up quite high it does sit up quite quite proud there um compared to the the van gogh banshee and that's where i wonder you know if it was a windy conditions if the conditions were going to be poor i still think i'd be bringing the banshee with me but if i was going up somewhere and i knew it wasn't going to be too bad uh, i was camping somewhere that wasn't going to be too exposed or if i was camping somewhere that had a particularly long hike in then i think that's where the, the tiger 2 comes in handy as i said earlier it packs down much it packs down smaller than the banshee and it's about a kilogram lighter than the banshee and it's roomier than the banshee but i do think for durability that the banshee probably wins there so it comes with plenty of pegs guidelines and packs up nice and small i will be taking that mat with me i will be taking the floor with me i don't think i would be pitching this tent without the floor um the sack that you get there for putting the tent in there's room in there so i think you know after this i'll just be simply rolling that up and putting it inside uh, there's no need to carry two separate bags there and that is pretty much it you'll see just putting them together just to illustrate it does it is a smaller size which is the reason i wanted it it is lighter again the reason i wanted it and I suppose the trade-off when you're going for something as light as this is that the material used in the construction is inevitably lighter and that that means that it may not be just as durable. So the Banshee Pro 200 for durability and the Nature Hike Tiger 2 for ultralight. Very comfortable, very roomy tent. And not be getting rid of the Banshee Pro 200, definitely not. It's, um, it, it is a fantastic tent. Uh, I would absolutely recommend it. But likewise, the Nature Hike Tiger 2 for 90 pounds, I think is a fantastic tent. Really lightweight, great size, and I'm looking forward to getting it out into the hills and giving it a proper test once all this lockdown has finished and I will update this whenever that happens and tell you how it holds up in the field.